everything old is new again. America's entertainment pop culture talk show. It may well possess a rudimentary intelligence. I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. Well, the great disturbance in the force. Hello, I'm Mr. Ray. Come on, Mark, I got a job for me. Where's the goodies? Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. I bet you wouldn't have done anything like this if Mom and Dad were here. You filthy criminal. Excuse me while I whip this out. Go ahead. Make my day. Here are your hosts, Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. I know what it's like to be bullied as a kid, and I know what it's like to have people always on you and what it can do to your self-esteem. So I'm so proud of you for what you're doing. All these kids know that they're special, they're one of a kind. You know, if they're a child of God, the most high God, and they under they need to understand that they're just growing and developing and they're moving on to greatness. So thank you for what you oh, do. Brother, I appreciate I'm on the team man. and thank I love you. you and I love what you do. And we love uh, Everything Old is New Again here on Everything Old is New Again. Douglas Viviani with the Sports Entertainer of the Year, David Cohen. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you Sports Entertainer of the Year? And who was Hulk Hogan talking about there? Hmm. Hmm. We'll get to that in a moment. Yes, we will. <laughs> First, I just want to talk about, like, since our show number 227, if anybody's keeping track, where we spoke about wrestling and all things wrestling, uh, the history of wrestling, and, and we uh, just really wanted to g- give a little fix to wrestling. Wrestling and all that. There's been a clamor of uh, requests by fans to hear more about wrestling and more about uh, things that are happening in, in that sports entertainment field. We're, but we're going to do that this show, but we're going to go way beyond wrestling because I think there's a great story here. And when you find out who our guest is, I think you're going to uh, be excited to know uh, what's going on uh, with respect to that. We're going to talk to someone that's written a book that is known as How to Be Happy, or the happiest person on the planet. Coincidentally, he also was the Intercontinental Champion for the WWF and held other titles. David Cohen? Yes, we're really excited. Now, so who are we talking about? Mark Merrow began his career as a three-time Golden Gloves boxer, winning the New York Golden Gloves boxing tournament. Then after some unexpected twists and turns, became a professional wrestler with WCF, uh, T- uh, WCE, TNA, and the WWF. Uh, it, he was known as Johnny B. Bad, uh, the wild man, man marvelous Mark Merrow, and three-time WCW, it was, world TV champion, and later became the WWF Intercontinental Champion. But since retirement from wrestling in 2006, he's been transformed to even more of an important figure, I think, as he is now champion of Choices, an anti-bullying and motivational program, of which we'll explain later as the show goes on. Mark Merrow, welcome. Everything old. How you guys doing? We're doing great. We thought we'd never get to actually speaking to you after that incredibly long introduction. (laughs) I don't even know why you guys need me now. You already told everybody everything. <laughs> <laughs> Except to go to Amazon to buy the book and to go to YouTube and check out your uh, uh, program. And Mark, it's you. been great speaking with you. Thank Take you. Have care. a great night. <laughs> <laughs> We're here all week. Listen, uh, I'm so interested in what you're doing now, but I want to talk a little bit smidge because you got a quote there, and we heard from Hulk Hogan. Obviously, you're familiar with Hulk Hogan, who's, uh, let's call him the Babe Ruth of wrestling. Um, you didn't wrestle him, but you knew him. How did that friendship uh, develop in the locker room, I guess, or absolutely. We've been friends for gosh. Um, I mean, we wrestled in WCW together, WWF together, and been you know been together for many many years. And we always just had a great friendship. And then obviously after I retired from wrestling, he loves what I do. He's got a you know he's got his own stories of of being bullied as when he was younger. And uh, he really came aboard, and he he just really supported me in what I was doing. And, um, you know, just we even, I remember we went to Game 7 of the Stanley Cup together in Tampa, Florida, when the Lightning won the the Cup years ago. And we've just remained friends for so many years. That's great to hear. He uh, He's a lightning rod for a, a lot of different causes and promotions and things, and it's uh, great to see to have him on your team, so to speak. Uh, now, you've, you've been up against uh, Cactus Jack, a Long Island native, of course, uh, uh, and uh, Honky Tonk Man, and Dustin Rhodes, Triple H even, Gold Dust. I mean, this goes on and on the list here. Uh, uh, J- Val Venus and, and The Rock. Now, we've, we've had a show. We've talked about a lot of what's going on in, in wrestling now. You've, you've seen these, these characters. You were 
in an era where I think you were able in interviews to kind of carry the day yourself a little bit with a little bit of an outline. It seems like now they're they're almost scripted. Am I wrong, or is that sort of what was happening at the in the day? Well, you know, I, I think you know they've when I was there it was the Attitude Era, you know, so it was almost like anything went, you know, it was just crazy, you right. know. But you know, we also when you look around the locker room, you see some of the greatest wrestlers that have ever wrestled in the ring. I mean, everybody, you know, from from The Rock to Hulk Hogan to um, uh, Ric Flair. Uh, I wrestle all these guys that are just phenomenal wrestlers, but also just amazing on the microphone too. And uh, a lot of it was not scripted. I mean, they just kind of just had an idea what they wanted to say and went out there, and uh, and it just came across, I think, as more authentic. Which I think was, yeah, exactly. We, we grew up, I personally grew up li- watching wrestling, and, and David, and we've talked about this in the past, in the late 70s, uh, and when it was on, uh, you know, uh, UHF, if anybody remembers that, uh, trying to get the... the, 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 the rabbit ears to to kind of work and and see through the uh the snow if you will on, on the on the tv and and all the way through wrestlemania and so forth it's been an amazing run but i think now you can see uh, just to me they've lost me a little bit in that uh, that spark of creativity is not there you were so creative on the mic hulk hogan uh macho man randy savage the things that you guys brought to the the microphone at the time to just riff and and uh and kind of develop the rivalries yourself i guess is what i'm trying to say was seems to be a little more creative when you're doing that your creative juices are going than as opposed to when i guess you're reading a script if that makes sense it does make sense, you know, and I think it's, it's sometimes going off the cuff or having an idea of what you want to say and your, your own personality comes out and through that, that interview, and it, and it makes a lot of fun. And, you know, uh, Rock was one of the, not only funniest, but he had some of the best catch, catch raises, too. <laughs> you don't see that as much anymore. Right, exactly. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it was a great time to be in wrestling. We would turn on the Saturday night's uh, main event uh, on NBC, and it just uh, it's, it was a great time for wrestling. Was it something, like, you see on the screen all the smiles and all the, the uh, personalities and all the fun that you're bringing to others? But uh, it doesn't sound, I don't know, it's, it's still a job, right? I mean, this was not an easy thing to do, I don't think. I mean, you must run on the road, like maybe something like 250, 300 days out of the year. And uh, what was it like to be behind the scenes on, on all this during that time? Well, you know, it's just like anything in life. When you have goals and dreams and you achieve something like making it into professional wrestling, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of people that want to do something like that or wish they could do something like that or set goals to do like that and that never made it and then being one of those few guys that are on television it is a, a dream come true but then the reality sets in of the monotony of of the travel uh the injuries um you know the you know it's, it's amazing when you really think about it wrestlemania is our super bowl and the amazing thing about having a Super Bowl wrestling called WrestleMania in the actual NFL Super Bowl, the next day they're off for, I think it's four or five or six months. The next night we're at Monday Night Raw. <laughs> exactly. You know, we, we don't have no off season. So your body never really completely recuperates from a lot of the injuries that many of the wrestlers, um, including myself, what we're, we're going through. And you remember something, if you're not ready to go, there's 10,000 people behind you who are. So you want to keep your television spot. You want to keep going. You, so a lot of guys wrestled inju- injured, which led to a lot of um, um, you know addictions, uh, sure. pain addictions, and, and so on and so forth. Mark, is, what, what kind of support did you have for the injuries? In other words, from a medical pr- medical standpoint, because you know in football and other major sports, you know there's a highly trained medical staff, you know, attending to you and and speeding the recovery no, m- more more faster or faster than like a normal person would recover from an injury. How, how did it work in wrestling? Well, you know, the amazing thing about um, WWF was they they always had the. When you like when I blew out my knee, they sent me to the best doctor in the country, James Andrews, who's done some of the I'm most sure. amazing surgeries. And everyone in, in sports medicine knows who he is. He, uh, you know, reconstructed and put my knee, knee knee back together, and total reconstruction, ACL, medial collateral, meniscus. He he's the one that did the operation on that. So I had the best doctors, you know. Um, I've had 14 surgeries, you know, knees, shoulders, wow. elbows. Um, you know, even heart surgery, you know, so I've, I've been through quite a, quite a bit 
but uh, I've never felt better than I am right now. So, <laughs> and the, fun, the great thing is, is that it, I go out there every night, night after night at, at, at schools or churches or corporations, and you still get to entertain people, but nobody's hitting you over the head with a chair anymore. So <laughs> well, you hope not, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, that's that's uh, Mark Murrow, and he's our champion of choices. Uh, we'll talk uh, with him after the break here about the anti-bullying, anti-drug inspirational program that he has now. And you can learn more about that if you're listening and want to get a little bit ahead of us here at Think Pods with a Z, think, T-H-I-N-K-P-O-Z dot org. So stick with us. We'll be back uh, right after this and everything old is new again to talk all things Mark Merrow and champion of choices here on Everything Old is New Again. You're listening to Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. The wild man has done it! He is the new Intercontinental Champion! Ladies and gentlemen, the new Intercontinental Champion, the wild man, Mark Merrill, falls in a night for you. Congratulations! We're so proud of you here. There we go, and we're proud of Mark Merrow here. That was... Back from 1996, when the Wild Man won his Intercontinental Championship with the WWE, our champion himself, David Cohen, is here with me on Everything Old is New Again. Uh, David, how are you doing? Hanging in there. I'm really excited. <laughs> Good reliving, reliving those great times with, a, with Mark. Exactly. We've got a uh, tag team match here going against uh, uh, Mark. And Mark, thanks for joining us. I first became aware of what you're doing now and i don't know how it happened but uh, the seos are you know uh unusual where you're, you're searching certain things on the internet on youtube and all and do it all the time for the different shows and all of a sudden this video came up of you doing a tremendous uh, tremendously moving speech uh to children and i noticed that there was already two million views to date and you was promoting and talking to them about choices that people make in their lives and relating it to yourself and how you had some difficulties in life and how you were uh, made aware of uh, your mom passing away when you were in, in tokyo i think it was at least in japan and you had uh, a sort of a revelation of about uh, parents and about choices that we make in life. And I think that may have been a turning point, you tell me, in your life. But I, uh, I don't know how it came to be, but I'm very uh, interested in your story and more. What are you doing now? Explain to us what's, uh, what's Champions of Choice and what's it all about. Well, be before I share that with you, I just want to give you a side note on that video that you saw. It was amazing because uh, the one who filmed that video, believe it or not, is Diamond Dale's page. Huh. There you go. Yeah, I was actually staying in his house in, in uh, Atlanta while I was doing some schools out that way. And uh, he said to me, because, you know, he is the DDPY Yoga, and, he, you know, they have a whole film crew and everything. He goes, do you mind if they come out there and film the, the presentation today? And I said, sure. And a few days later, he said to me, he goes, hey, Mark, we pulled a, a, a clip from that uh, presentation you did. And he goes, you mind if we put it up on, on YouTube? You never know. It might go viral. <laughs> and sure enough, <laughs> that video just went crazy. And uh, But I, I owe that to, to Dallas Page for for uh, first coming up with that and, and putting it out there. And the substance, though, of what you were saying there was so touching and so uh, relevant and significant. If anyone will get there, but if anyone is listening uh, that uh, have children in school, I would suggest looking at that video, took, taking a look at your website, Champions of Choice, and uh, maybe suggesting to the local school, which I'm going to do after this show, uh, to have Mark come to the school in an assembly and uh, motivate, inspire, and guide your children with a smile but also with some tremendous uh, message. And generally speaking, one of the messages is what you were saying is something my parents said to me when I was growing up all the time is birds of a feather flock together. I don't know if kids are hearing that anymore, uh, but more or less what you're saying is that, you know, when you surround yourself with negativity, you're going to become negative. Surround yourself with something positive. Most likely you're going to go down that road. Am I wrong? You are absolutely right. You know, we, sur we, we become who we surround ourselves with. I, I often tell these kids, you're your friends are like elevators. They're either going to take you up or they're going to take you down. You show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Right, exactly. And when you present this to, first of all, it's a what, I, 45 minutes, hour pro pro program? How long is the program? 
We, we ask for an hour at schools. Yeah, okay. it's a one-hour program. And, you know, the amazing thing about the program, though, is, is, my gosh, every school we go to, we get at least 100 messages after the presentation from students that have written to me. And I got to tell you, it's a different world today than we were in high school or we were in school with, with the, uh, the anxiety and the depression that kids are going through, the, the self-harm. I mean, we never... I've never seen anybody or knew anybody that cut themselves, or I didn't know anybody that wanted to kill themselves. And suicide now is is, is rampant among young people today. And, and you know, the saddest part is I meet I meet so many parents have lost their kids to suicide or drug overdose or or even horrific car accidents from from drinking it or whatever. And you know, it it just I tell you, it it, it just propels me and. And, and just makes me want to do more and more and more. I don't want families have to go through this. I don't want to see, I don't want to go to any more funerals. I don't want to see parents that are, that are well, they, they don't get over it. You don't get over losing a child. I mean, it may make it a little easier after a while through time, but you don't, you don't ever get over it. Right. And, and, you know, I have a nine-year-old and a six-year-old. David has a 19, I believe he has been, right? Uh, is 19, 20-year-old. 20 20 so uh, we have a spectrum here. And what I see, like my Jellica, six or nine-year-old, was at a, uh, a little concert or talent show last night. She did a performance and came home. And, you know, behind the scenes, you hear a little kind of negativity from one person or another that she heard about someone else that was performed and she, you know, naturally children, especially at this age, have a tendency to kind of go along with and want to become part of the crowd. So if that friend of hers didn't like person A on stage and said that to her, you know, she could take the choice of going down and joining into this negativity and we stopped that immediately and, and uh, because I really think some of these problems do start with children and their self-esteem when they're even, you know, at this impressionable age and not knowing how to, to deal with someone that's a friend that's kind of negative and wants to be negative. And we said to Angelica, listen, always be positive and say, no, that was my friend singing with me, and she was terrific, wasn't she? And so that the person that's being negative about her friend, let's say, uh, would, it, that would bounce off that person and maybe the positivity uh, would affect them. I don't know if this anybody is, is ringing a bell with you, but it, it, it's so significant to me that that happened last night, and I heard that this morning, and we tried to turn that around and have you on the show the, uh, the same day. I just thought it was uh, something to mention to you. I don't know what your reaction is to that. Well, you know, the thing is, I love being around positive people. I mean, I really enjoy being around upbeat, positive people. And the, the, the saddest part, you notice that when someone starts talking about somebody, when someone starts being negative, when someone starts putting someone down, it really brings the whole room down. Right. You know, and, 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 we, and then we, we become, we, we, we surround ourselves with that, and then we find ourselves doing the same thing. You know, negativity brings up, breeds other negativity and more and more of it. And I, I really look to be around, I really kind of surround myself with a lot of positive people. It doesn't mean that bad things don't happen in your life. We all go through, we all go through valleys, you know. But i got to tell you something, you know, through these valleys, man, through our struggles, we, we find our strength. And we could do such amazing things in this world by having a positive attitude. Remember, Henry Ford once said, you know, he invented the Ford company. He said, if you say you can or you say you're, you can't, you're right. <laughs> you know, so what, what is it that you really believe in your life, you know? And, and I got to tell you that, that, you know, so many times we aim so low in life. We, we don't, I, I always challenge students to aim high, you know? And I ask them to write their dreams and goals into existence, write their dreams and goals down, you know? And, and don't say things like, uh, I hope to make the team. How about if you wrote down, I want to lead the league in scoring? Instead of writing down, I hope to sing in the school play, how about you aim high and say, you know, someday I'm going to win a Grammy. See, failure is not aiming high and missing. Failure is aiming too low and hitting. Right. We can underestimate ourselves. And sometimes we're getting that maybe that internal feeling that we can't do it because other people have been negative in our lives and said, ah, oh, you know, you can't do that. Why would you start a radio show at uh, 48 years old or whatever I was, 50 years old, we started this show? You're, you're insane. What do you, why, what, you waited so long or you're never going to do anything with this, right? David said that. I think. Yeah, and then I <laughs> under, ended up joining you. <laughs> no, but we've always <laughs> been that. <laughs> we've always... You, couldn't be, you couldn't have hit the nail on the head any better than that. You know, we, because we surround ourselves with negative people, people are going to tell you you're not big enough, you're not strong enough, you're not qualified, but you can't sing, you're not a good athlete. And I'd, let me tell you something: the reason why they tell you you can't do it is because they can't do it. Right, right. It feeds Don't into give up on dreams and goals. You know, I got to tell you guys, I'm never going to retire. I mean, when I say that, I won't retire. I'm just going to refire. <laughs> I reinvent myself, and I tell you something. And when you hear like people say. 
those were the days. I'm here to tell you, these are the days. These are the days we grow from past mistakes. We, we grow in grace and knowledge. We can accomplish anything we set our minds to. My gosh, you want to write a book. You want to start a business. You know, these are the days to go after dreams and goals. Right, exactly. And, and that's the kind of message I'm sure that you're presenting to the children from what I've seen. What, um, just from the other perspective, do you hear from the, stu- uh, the teachers and the administration, and of course the students, for feedback from the, after the presentation? You said you hear from hundreds of them. What, what, uh, what generally speaking, are, are you getting as, as a result? Or comments. Oh my gosh! We, we are first of all, we get so many testimonies from um, from teachers that that see our presentation and write to us. But you know, the cool thing about the uh, the, the um, uh, presentations from faculty or principals or teachers is that how it affected them personally. You know, it isn't just for students. These presentations are affecting adults as much as it is, as it is the students. And uh, it's amazing how many letters I'm getting with it. I got to say, the cool, some of the cool letters I get are from the parents. <laughs> you know, from w- when the kids come home from school, because I challenge the kids to to um, start. You know, so often in life we we um, we don't appreciate things. You know, we often take for granted the very things we should appreciate, like the love of our parents, the sacrifice of our parents and our family that allows us to do so many things. I mean, how many kids don't have a phone today? You know what I mean? I mean, right. it's, it's absolutely crazy on how kids today, almost every kid has a cell phone. I mean, very seldom you see one that doesn't have a cell phone, you know? So, you know, um, we, just, we just spoke over at Seymour High School uh, a couple days ago. And he, let me read you a quick letter from the, the, the director of security from, from the, the area out there. He said, uh, Mark, we can't thank you enough for the amazing and valuable life-changing experience you shared with our students at Seymour Connecticut Schools. Our students at Seymour High School and Seymour Middle School can't stop raving about your presentation and how it truly touched their hearts, opened their minds, and has inspired them to change. We have received calls and emails from many staff members, parents, and kids who are all talking about how you inspired them to reevaluate their lives and what an impactful presentation it was. Can't thank you enough for making this huge impact on our kids and being an inspiration for our students, adults, and me in our schools to make a positive choice and change for the best. And that's from Rich Kearns, the director of security for Seymour Public Schools. That's amazing. And you're doing these, uh, because we're running out of time for this section, you're doing these lectures uh, anywhere in the U.S. I saw you were on Long Island a little ways back, and then you're going upstate New York, and then you were in Texas, and so anywhere in the country, correct? Yeah, U.S., Canada, but we even went to Russia and spoke at schools in Russia. I uh, wish we had our show in Russia, but we'll, we're a little bit in Canada, so we can, we can affect that a little bit. But all right, we'll be back right after this and everything old. Let's do it again to talk a little wrestling and, of course, continue talking about champion of choices with uh, Mark Merrow himself. We'll be back right after this. This is my fight song. Take back my life song. My- now, back to America's entertainment pop culture talk show. Everything old is new again with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Jim, I know all about the Undertaker. You're not going to see a new side of the Undertaker. You're going to see a new side of this game. To the wild man. This is the kind of match that can send me right to the top of the World Wrestling Federation. This is the kind of match that makes me go wild. Now, welcome back to Everything Old is New Again. That's the wild man, Mark Merrow, an interview about talking about the Undertaker. 97, sorry. <laughs> no, I said that. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Merrow's with us, and he is now promoting and is presenting a tremendous program uh, entitled uh, and, and called Champion of Choices uh, for our youth, and we'll get to talking about that uh, again shortly, and I, I think uh, it's something that if wherever you're listening to us, he will go to your location for sure, if invited. So it might be a good idea to knock on the uh, superintendent door of, of whatever school district you're in and, and make a recommendation, maybe even bring a tape of this show with you. <laughs> it's a great program, and I, I think that it's something that's very worthwhile. This is now interesting to me. You mentioned Diamond, da- Diamond Dallas Page, who's now involved with yoga and teaching how to stay in shape. Cactin- Cactus Jack, which is mankind, uh, Mick Foley's writing children's books. Triple H is the vice president of wwe steve austin's got a huge podcast and and host tv shows the rock is the biggest movie star in the world today so there is life after wrestling for sure and your life uh in and out of wrestling uh, took so many turns how did you end up doing what you're doing now from being say the intercontinental champion and being on what would you say the the fast lane well i mean obviously it's bad choices you know, made some horrible choices in my life, and we're defined by those choices. And 
you know, uh, after wrestling ended for me, um, addiction, um, substance abuse, just uh, out of control. Spinning my world spun out of control, you know. And uh, then it was just came to a point where I, you know, it comes down to a point where you really have to make a decision in life. You're either going to die, and I've overdosed on drugs uh, many times, three times to be exact. I mean, almost where I should have been dead. And uh, it's amazing that I'm alive today. And I use those life experiences because, number one, there's no greater joy than helping another person. I, I have never found such passion in my life, uh, but more and more passionate, but I'd say purpose. You know, I really believe this is my calling, is to do what I'm doing right now. And, you know, because I'm very honest, I think that's why the kids really enjoy the presentation, is because I'm, I'm, I'm really putting myself out there. I'm, I'm completely open with my, my, my bad choices, where they took me, and, of course, where the good choices took me, and how to be successful in life, how to set goals, how to um, go after dreams and goals in life, and not giving up, and not being defined by other people's opinion. My life completely changed. I mean, going from making it to losing it all to making it again now how does a person find the intestinal fortitude if you will to when you've had it and you're down or when you're down and you haven't had success yet as you uh, will define success shortly but you know how, how do you get where does it come from the the intestinal fortitude is the thing i think of to to get up off the mat and say i'm gonna as you said reinvent myself or the rock is going to become a movie star or, or cactus jack is going to write children's books what's the common theme in all of these people that have moved including yourself moved on from one profession to another from uh, some being down to up to down again and, and just continue to, to fight the struggle if you will of life with a smile I, I I think everyone might have their own opinion or, or maybe a little different. I think we all come from the kind of a same mold, but I, 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 I think everyone has that inside of them. I think that we underestimate how strong we are. Like I said, through our struggles, we find our strength. And for me, it was also my faith in God. I mean, that really propelled me to want to make a change in life was, I know, we all leave a legacy, you know, whether we like it or not, it could be good or bad, you know, and I did not want my legacy to be a guy that died of drugs, mm. that a guy that, that accomplished nothing in the world other than winning a, a belt in a wrestling show, you know, right. I, I really wanted to leave this planet knowing that I made a difference, you know, and it wasn't, it's not going to be how much money I had or how big my house was or nice my car was, it's going to be the difference I made in somebody else's life. And, and Mark, it's, it, it all comes down to a choice, right? You, you could choose to choose to go out on that note, or you can choose to, to turn your life around. Isn't that really what it, what it pivots on? It is. We are defined by our choices. You know, and I don't care how young or old you are, it is never too late to go after your dreams and goals and turn your life around. You know, um, and, and it starts, and in, in you got to have it. It's a combination. It's the it's a, it's a mental. It's a, the physical. It's the spiritual parts of your, of your, your inner being that, that have to change. All of them need to change. I mean, being healthy is so important. You know, you can, you can have, a, um, you know, great ideas in life, but when your health fails you, it, it's like, what can you do? You know, and it's so important to people to realize that and, and then turn their lives around, stop smoking, don't drink so much, or whatever the, the, the vice they have. They can make changes now in their life to have a better life and more successful relationships and friendships if they turn their life around. Now, how do you uh, present this idea to students in a auditorium and let's say you do age i'm going to assume something from 10 to 18 in that range i guess right i mean what's the youngest you're speaking um, to the, i go to middle schools but i don't go to i, I we have a, we have another program that goes to elementary schools okay. but i do middle schools all the way through to college all right so let's say i'm going to guess 12 to 22 let's say yeah you, you have that mm -hmm. group in the auditorium how do you light that fire to get them to actually in this fast world to put that phone down listen to what you're saying for the 45 minutes to an hour become inspired and take your message away in their heart that they're going to remember this 
<laughs> and that's well, not an easy I, question, but it's what no, you no, do, no, so no, I want to know how it, you do it. Yeah, it, you know, I have a multimedia presentation, so as I'm talking, there's videos and there's there's pictures flashing behind me. Everything from when I was a little boy growing up to the you know the apartment I lived in in a poor section in New York to you know um, making it making it in professional wrestling and becoming a, a multimillionaire, then losing it all, and then and then working my way to to bring it back. But it really inspires people to know that no matter where they are in life we can always do something great especially young people because they want you know it's, it's funny because young people base their success on money and fame you know and and, and people believe that like uh, you know the, that money is going to make you happy or 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 success the key to success you know is or is, is is being rich and famous where man happiness is the key to success and people don't realize happiness is a choice you know, it's, it's not so much about our circumstance or our situation. It's how we respond to it that makes all the difference. Right. And the other thing is what I've seen, and I want to see this in person, so I'm going to be pulling for this uh, in our school district. And you can, uh, listeners, as well, uh, by going to uh, uh, writing info at thinkpaz.org or go to thinkpaz.org itself. And you, there's tons of information about how to get Mark uh, to your school district and or uh, what the program is about in these videos and so forth to see what's happening. But what I've seen by going through that and doing a little research, looking over your shoulder electronically so to speak uh, that you tap into emotions and you tap into family because i think we all especially at the age in, in you know high school college and and before then uh you're impressionable but you're trying to please whether it's conscious or subconscious please your parents or at least good look good for your parents or at least you want the respect from your parents you know and and i think that to me uh, that is what makes this successful is you, is that you tap into the family emotions uh and and are unabashedly honest about what your experience in that regard you know i i share my my life story and, and i really found that by Touching a person's heart is how you change their mind. And it really has worked. It's my 12th year speaking in schools, thousands of schools. Uh, well over a million students have seen me live now. And it's been absolutely incredible how many people's hearts have been changed and touched by this presentation. And more so than that, the kids that say it saved their life. Not only the kids, the parents that told me it saved their kids' life. Uh, kids that were going to, we had kids that actually wrote a suicide note that were going to end their life. And they saw the presentation, it changed their life. We averted a, a shooting in Atlanta. Uh, there were so many things that we have done through this program by touching a person's heart is how you change their mind. Now, Vince McMahon had to touch your heart in some way, uh, or at least your, <laughs> your pocketbook. We can't go, uh, and we have about a minute here, so it's not fair, but um, what's your impression of, of Vince McMahon and his experience with you? Was he fair, not fair? There's so many stories. What, just a little peek into the behind the scenes. Well, people don't realize I was the first wrestler to get a guaranteed contract. And he gave me, you know, he gave me a great contract, a big signing bonus, and he allowed my my wife to wrestle or to come with me and be my valet, which you know became Sable. Right. And so we, you know, for us, he, he did wonderful by us. And he certainly has changed the industry. He's a visionary. Uh, he's uh, totally successful monetarily. I don't know if you know him that way or not, but does he define a person like that define success as money or something else? I, I wouldn't say he defines it as money because he is really passionate about what he does. Right. And they say when you find your passion, you know, you, 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 you never have to work in your life because you love what you do. Exactly. And I really believe this is his passion. I agree, and, and your passion is speaking to, at this point, speaking to uh, the youth of America through Champion of Choices. Uh, take a look at thinkpaz.org, and we'll be back right, this, right after this on Everything Old is New again with Mark Merrill for one more section, talking about all things positive and happiness and uh, wrestling all together. Hit this smell! What the rock is cooking! This is Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. No, no. He's got the man of a paw the wild man. Look at this. Pro man thrown on his back. That paralyzing man of a paw applied. You're responsible for this, Goldust. 
<laughs> Welcome back to everything, uh, everything else is doing again. I love that. This is uh, Douglas Viviani with David Cohen applying the mandible claw, figuratively speaking, for the so I was submission hold to the wild man, Mark Mouse. That must have been painful, Mark. You know, I, I enjoyed the show up until about now. Okay? <laughs> that would have to be one of the most, it is one of the most bizarre holds, if anybody hasn't seen you know, this. You know what's uh, really funny was that I wrestled him as Cactus Jack, <laughs> Mankind, Dude Love, Nick Foley. <laughs> yes, Nick Foley. Uh, He's a piece of work, and that uh, mandible claw had to be, they had to convince Vince McMahon to permit that. And uh, <laughs> somebody said, why wouldn't, if you're a wrestler, why wouldn't you just clamp down on the guy's fingers and bite the fingers off, you know, when the guy's doing that uh, to you? And that was the internal controversy, right? That he started to put on some kind of a, a sock on his fingers. To, I don't know. It was just bizarre. <laughs> anyway, that, <laughs> that's a little bit of wrestling there that I, I get a kick out of. I go back to, to all those days and, and WrestleManias, and uh, and I just loved, loved it back then because there was actually, in some ways, a positive message on some of these wrestlers. It's, of course, you, everybody remembers the Hulk with the, the vitamins and the prayers and so forth and, and, and his being good versus evil. And, and I think uh, Mark speaks uh, to that in his program, Champion of Choices, and brings that to the table where there is good versus evil, if you will, in the world, or within ourselves as we go through struggles. And Mark's written a book called How to Be the Happiest person on the planet that you can get from amazon.com uh that was written about uh seven eight years ago mark what uh what what do you suggest in that book that we could take away just for a little pearl of wisdom if you can to be the happiest person on the planet well you know sometimes the uh, one thing i found out with, with finding happiness and, and and choosing happiness in my life i should say is forgiveness forgiveness is so important you know and, and, and sometimes the hardest person to forgive is ourselves. We, we constantly are always thinking about the past of something we may, maybe did or didn't do. And you either forgive or you relive. And I really share that in my book because, you know, forgiveness was something I had a lot of trouble with in my life. And then when I finally did, it released me from this emotional prison. And my life changed. And, and, and a big part of it was choosing to forgive, including myself. And, and people say to me, and if you have to forgive somebody else of something that they did wrong to you, and people say, well, Mark, how do you know you've forgiven someone? And for me, it's like when someone mentions their name and I don't get angry anymore. Right. <laughs> so right. I know I've forgiven uh, them, you know? <laughs> yeah, I spoke to my, my daughter about this also. You know, when you're negative... You're the one that's controlling the thoughts in your mind, and now you're allowing that negativity, whether it's about other people, whether it's about yourself, to control your day. When I was in uh, tough times in junior high school and high school, especially transitioning from one to the next, sometimes you're missing friends and you're in classes, you don't know these people and whatever, and you almost have to in some way put a smile on and maybe pretend to be happy and all of a sudden happy people are drawn to you and you become happy because they're happy that you're pretending to be happy but they don't know that you're pretending so now everybody's happy does that make sense i'm happy <laughs> <laughs> but a lot is if you're positive you bring positive energy to you right you, you do you do and, that, and that's what i try to bring to, to a room try to bring to an auditorium is they, they see a guy that's that's really lost a lot um you know i lost my little brother and sister they both died at 21 my mom died at 58 my dad died while i was holding them in my arms lost many of our friends in the wrestling industry and you know when they see all the, the trauma and the valleys i've been through my life and then to come out there and 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 look at yourself as the happiest person on the planet you know and to to choose to be happy no matter what has happened in my life you know and i still go through stuff we you know it's not like it's gonna end it's just gonna be happy the rest of your life we right. go through the these valleys but i really found that being content is the most important thing it, being content like you know like i can't give anything materialistic i want you know, I don't go, oh, gosh, I want this new car, I want this new house, I need, you know, all these things that, that I thought were important growing up are very meaningless in the sense that I, I have a, a comfortable house, it's not real big like, I, like people think I would have, or, you know, um, and, and I don't, I don't uh, go out and buy real expensive things, I don't need it. You know, and I, I live within my means. And, and sometimes, I guess, you, you talk about writing down goals, and when you were a little boy, you, you had a, uh, a makeshift desk, you know, with cinder blocks and a, and a board, <laughs> right? And you, but you wrote down your goals, and like you said, you wrote goals that were extraordinary to be Rookie of the Year and do certain things, and, and you seem to, you know, present that in a nice way 
to these children you're, and, and young adults that you're speaking to that goal setting is important so that every day, even if you do a little small thing to get towards that goal, that might make you happy for that day? It's paramount goal setting. It is so important. And that's why I tell them to write it down, write it into existence, you know. And, uh, you know, many of the goals I wrote down, that's this little book that I still have. I actually bring it to the schools with me. I show the kids uh, that I've written, that the book I've written into, and it's my dream book. And I take it all over the world with me. And it's like these little goals I had as a boy, a little kid, 10-year-old kid that eventually would come true, you know, getting a, a it's, it's as silly as it was, you know, writing things down like, I want a black Cadillac, I want a speedboat, I want this, and all these materialistic things that eventually came true that really wasn't what brought me the happiness in life but as a little kid you think the material things are what's going to bring you happiness but the other goals of, of becoming successful in life and learning to write down your dreams and goals and then taking action towards those dreams and goals and not being defined by other people's opinion right, and also you know sometimes we can do all that and do the best we can and for whatever reason achieving that ultimate goal either takes a real long time or sometimes it doesn't actually happen the exact goal doesn't happen but the message i think you presented to in your lecture and, and in your books is is it's uh, we've said before it's never too late never give up i mean you've you've gone through some tough times and apparently uh, could have certainly given up and and you'd be somewhere else right now if you did absolutely you know and i think it's uh a testament to my life is that I want to share with other people, and 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 also, you know, that's why I'm so honest with my the the, the, the bad choices I made. And when I share my bad choices, I think kids can really relate to it because it's a, it's the roller coaster of life that we all go through stuff. But it's coming out of those valleys in life that we we have to realize that we are the author of our story. And every day you can write a new page. And just because you may have some bad chapters, just like me, it doesn't mean it's the end of the book. Right. Hey, Mark, if, if someone wants to help your charitable organization and, and give in some way, what's the best way for them to do it? Oh, uh, they can just go to our website, which is thinkpozpoz.org, which you guys have mentioned many times. And, and that's how we're able to go to all these schools is through charitable donations and, you know, schools that raise money for us to come in. I mean, flights and travel and everything's very expensive. And we go from school to school. You know, like I said, we did, uh, uh, I think it was 293 events last year. And I was gone for most of the most of the year other than the summer. And then the summer, I, I do a lot of churches and corporations in the summer. So I try to stay very busy, but there's nothing, like I said, no, there's no greater joy than helping another person. These kids are my passion. Well, we certainly encourage our listeners on the show to, to visit that site and, and uh, give what they can. Yes, and, and we're sort of, I just want to let you know that we're sort of staying away from the actual content of the message of, of the lecture because I really think that it's so powerful that you do need to hear it in the context and not just a, a soundbite here from us now. Get this program to your school and at the very least, look at, as a parent, look at the YouTube video. You'll see what Mark is presenting and believe Believe me, it may bring a tear, as for sure. It's also going to bring a smile, and it's also maybe going to light a little bit of inspiration within you uh, to go tell the school district and or uh, when the children hear this that they can um, – you know, be successful, whatever we define success as, by achieving your goals and making the right choices. Uh, I think it's really a tremendous message. And they're going to get, a, a, I see all over the place, a selfie or pictures with uh, you and that Intercontinental Championship belt, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have so much fun with these kids. After the presentation, I love meeting students and they're in their stories, too. Everybody's got a story. Everybody's got something they want to share with you or talk to you about. But the blessing is, is we find the kids that are self-harming, um, depressed, suicidal, and that's why we go to these schools. Right, and it's totally, completely relatable. Uh, real quick, one minute, which wrestler behind the scenes is most like his character and which is least like his character, if that makes any sense? Well, the most by far is uh, Randy Savage. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> he's just the most intense guy I've ever seen in my life. Really? He's like, he's like, he's like, hey, brother, hey, bad man, what's up, brother? Like, he's like that all the time. I can't saying that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I miss that guy. He was, he was the best, you know, and I really love him. And who's the furthest from his character? Um, like wow. maybe he's a great, uh, uh, you know, a baby face, but he's really kind of not so nice. Or the reverse, a guy that's really not so nice, <laughs> but really, I don't know if it's possible to say, you know. Uh, I guess, you know, I would say um, 
Undertaker's pretty, you know, he's pretty dark in the ring, but outside the ring, he's, he's really a nice person. Well, see, that's cool. So he actually does yeah. smile, huh? Yeah, yeah, he's a good guy, <laughs> man. So, yeah, he's probably the, in, in wrestling, it was one of the fun parts of my career, too, waiting in the ring for 10 minutes before he ever gets there, listen to bong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was some show, man, with Paul Barron and all that stuff and the smoke yeah. and whatever. Well, we've had a great time. It's a great show, and, and speaking to a great person himself, Mark Merrill, champion of choices, thinkpoz, P-O-Z, dot org. Uh, you can also just send an email, info at thinkpoz.org. Take a look at YouTube, uh, Amazon for the book, how to be the happiest person on the planet. Take a look at YouTube so for his presentation. Don't ruin it for the kids if you're going to get them uh, at, the, uh, at the school. Try to call the superintendent, write a letter, whatever it might be. It's well worth a, your time to have this gentleman come and speak to the youth uh, of your school district. Thank you, Mark, very much for spending so much time with Everything Old is New Again. Thank you, guys. Enjoyed the show. God bless. Actually, you too. Thank you. All right. We'll be back next week. Everything Old is New Again. Talk all things pop culture entertainment.